Oh, okay, all right, good. You know, I was worried, you know, now that we're starting to hit the, you know, the honeymoon phase of the semester's over, right? You've already had assignments due. You have assignments due next week, right? The energy starts to kind of mellow out. But luckily, uh, so this is where we start to make our shift, if you will if you will, right? This idea of if we kind of look at what we've been talking about so far. We talked about this agents and the environments that they live in. And then on Monday, we were sort of just kind of doing this refresher of 316, getting comfortable with graph traversal and uh, of really kind of just understanding our data structures again. But that's where we start to kind of shift our focus. On Monday, we talked about something known as uninformed search, right? This idea that if I'm dealing with some environment, really doesn't even matter kind of how big or small it is, but the idea was I'm only sort of considering my next possible actions, right? I only care about, well, actually, I can't even make that move. There, right? So I only cared about my next move. But the problem is that I don't know if I'm getting better or worse to my goal, right? Even if I just look at this type of situation, if I put my goal right there, you know, I look at that, or at least our agent looks at that, and with uninformed search, it doesn't know if this is better than this as a step, right? We can see, oh, that's closer, that's closer, that's further, but that's, when we think about uninformed search, that's where that comes into play. We do wanna kinda of have a little bit more intelligent design or a little bit more rational design in our agents, and that's where we start to bring in this concept of the informed search. So. What happens is, as we're starting to make these traversals, one of the things that we are going to start seeing uh, uh, a lot more often is sort of some form of quantifiable evaluation metric, right? This is the performance measure that we are talking about, but now really kind of solidifying it as some form of a, a value. And, you know, in our case, we'll, we'll call it f of n, but what that's really kind of saying, right, is, well, let me look at this, you know, state, this scenario, this environment, right? Given that world, how desirable is that world? How desirable is that configuration? That's how we start to kind of look at things. This is where I'll give you a hint, not for problem set one, but problem set two, right, as you start to kind of look at it, priority cues become a much, much more uh, uh, pronounced part of your repertoire, right? You learned about them in 316, the priority cue, right? Maybe played around with them or some shakings you know, on both sides, right? We use them, like, it's almost the thing that we're using in AI. Is That's your data structure. Uh, so if you're unfamiliar with them, get comfortable with them. Um, but, you know, again, as I start to look at this design, right, that's just me slapping an F in parentheses around an environment. I need something else. I need to, I need to transform this from mathematical symbols into quantifiable symbols. And how do I do that? Well, I'm going to add more mathematical symbols to this, right? What happens is that F of whatever that N is, is going to start with something like G of N. Now, what is G of N? The best way I can describe it, here's my kind of G, in my opinion, starts with 
how far I have gone, right? If we're looking at sort of our search tree in this given moment, right? If I make this transition, I have made one step, right? So that means that this G for this configuration is a one. Has anyone's mind been blown quite yet? Good, no, yeah, right? And so the idea is, you know, hey, that may change, right? I only said one because I'm just making this assumption that the weight of this edge is a one. But what happens if it gets into more complicated matters, right? What if instead of thinking about it in this 2D tile-based world, just because we've been dealing with the airport for so long, right? What if I add some values to those weights or those edges, right? Now there's a weighted edge going on here. And when I make a traversal, right, let's arbitrarily say this is RDU to Charlotte, instead of this being a value of one, let me change colors, right? The value of that G is 167. That would transform this same kind of thing, right? It, hey, to get to that location, it would cost me 167 whatevers, monies, dollars, miles, fuels, right? Whatever we want it to uh, represent uh, is where we would come in from there, right? And so we have a, a number of different solutions. Again, just to kind of talk about the uninformed approach, right? Just the uninformed approach, all I'm looking at is trying to make an assessment on what I currently can see. Well, if I only can see the things around me, again, if we're only playing with the idea of I'm RDU, let's arbitrarily see the, the options that RDU can work with. It can only see these three potential pathways. I can go up to Washington, D.C. I can go uh, across to Charlotte, or I can... Oh, so, uh, how do I undo? It would help if I drew this out correctly, right? right? It would be beneficial. There we go. Okay, so my options are I can either go to D.C., Charlotte, or Atlanta. Well... Let's look at how much it costs for each one of those steps. My goal condition is Seattle, right? But what's my first step? Well, in my case, you know, again, if we're only working off of uninformed, maybe one way we take that is let's take the cheapest path, right? Uniform uh, or greedy best first search uh, is what this is called, where all I'm doing is looking, hey, what's the cheapest next route, right? That's why you see, hey, I go to RDU, and then from, or uh, I go to uh, uh, Charlotte. And from Charlotte, the next cheapest route, right, if I'm looking at uh, all of these options that connect out of Charlotte, right, that's where Atlanta was the next cheapest, between uh, Memphis, uh, Kansas City, Orlando, and RDU. Well, again, Memphis is the cheapest, then Dallas-Fort Worth, then Denver, then uh, and she, always picking the cheapest route from where I'm at. Not really efficient. We all agree, right? Yeah. I mean, it followed a strategy, you know, and it got to a solution. But as we can see, sort of, it's not the world's greatest approach, right? So this can lead to inf uh, uh, not optimal uh, approaches. So, again, when we're looking at the limitations to these, we won't spend too much time. Again, these sort of, we're only attacking this section, right? Notice all, that, all it's saying is how far I've gone. Not what we want, which would be, let me, I'll go with, That's a G.
right? G was how far have I gone? But, and I haven't given it a, a title quite yet, but I want something that says, well, how much further do I have to go? Right? That's how I can start to make a, an assessment of whether or not I made a good move or not. Right? I can look at this and say, hey, how much further do I have to go? Versus, hey, how much further do I have to go? Right? We can see one of them only has one step needed. The other one's going to have more steps, three steps suddenly. And that's where I introduce H, right? Suddenly, this F is not the only thing I present to you. Suddenly, I also add in, let me get rid of the six and the seven. I'm going to just trim this off for our sake. It becomes... Where was I? I was right here. There we are. Right? It becomes that same concept. Now, I look not only at how far it took me to get somewhere, but how much further do I have to go from there? Right? That adds a little bit to this. Again, you can start to see uh, we call this a heuristic. Uh, a nice little kind of, you can see I got air quotes everywhere on my slides, right? It's a rule of thumb. It's an estimation where uh, it, it, will, it will change depending on your problem. And we'll see that actually literally today as we look at this. And then next week when we just go into a deep dive on heuristics. Uh, but again, this is our approach. So again, this is kind of that same situation going on here that now I have sort of my F value, my evaluation, my performance measure. And what I make as my assessment is, okay, well, again, how much did it cost me to get to this location? And how much more is it going to take me, estimated-wise, to get to my goal condition? And specifically, you heard that term, estimated-wise. Why? Because I may not know where my goal is, right? Uh, or some things that we're going into, right? Again, this type of situation where I have my goal at A, or I sorry, I have my starting location at A6. I have my goal at F4. I only have two possible moves that I can work off of: go up or go to the right. Fair enough, right? Well, again, if both of these the weights are the same cost, right? Then both of these are going to give me sort of the same sort of calcula, or sorry, the same amount of. G would equal 1, right? G would equal 1 from here. G would equal 1 from here because it takes one move to get to these spots. But now, how do I assess that question, right? How much further do I have to go? It's easy when I'm giving you a, a, a 3 by 6 grid and you can see 1, not 1, right? But it gets harder as we start to make our maps a little more complicated. Notice there's a wall suddenly. And so this is where I'm introducing something known as the Manhattan distance formula or the Manda Manhattan distance calculation. The entire idea to Manhattan distance, as you're starting to see with that little line, is we got to go, you know, who here has been to New York? Okay, right. It's a grid. It's a grid-like structure, right? Not like the South where it's all... Weird, right? It's a grid-like structure, and the idea is, okay, well, if I want to travel in Manhattan, I cannot go diagonal, right? It's physically impossible. There's buildings in the way. So, oh, you got to go three blocks up and then take two blocks to the right is what Manhattan distance is effectively uh, trying to give us. So, oh, if I wanted to get from this location... Right, this A5, to my goal location, we're going to ignore walls. Right? We don't care that there's a wall, a barrier. That part doesn't matter. Right? That, that overcomplicates the math. Right? Oh, well, it would take me one, two, three, four, five, six moves from that A5 to get to F4. And so that will be my H. It will take that much steps. Now, granted, in this case, uh, B6 is going to do the same thing. It'll take me one, two, three, four, five, six moves to get there. But again, 
I've established, the part I'm trying to get at is, I have established now an estimation of how much further I have to go. Yeah, yeah, questions on this, especially walking through walls? Yes. Correct. So yes, we are we are still in the world of we know where the goal is, or we have a, have a very clear vision of what goal means uh, from in this type of situation, right? So yes, I mean when we remove sort of the goal, or the goal kind of becomes much more ambiguous, the entire thing gets harder. So you know, we're only on lecture four. Let me, we'll get there. So Manhattan distance isn't the only way, though, right? That works great in a grid-like system. We don't live in a grid-like system a lot of times, right? And so there are other approaches that will come to be, right? Sometimes you might want to use something like a straight-line formula. If you've ever hopped on Google Maps and just done a little search, right, you notice how sometimes you get more than one possible route to a location, right? Oh, then you make assessments. Oh, here's the estimated amount of time it'll take with each one of our routes. That's essentially kind of, you could use that as the analogy I got going on here. I just went on Google Maps, you know, and then typed in those uh, addresses and found out how many miles it was to drive between the two of them, right? Right? Straight line, air quote there kind of thing. But the big idea is, okay, right? I now have an established how much further it will take me from a given location. If I am in Atlanta and my goal, right? If I am in Atlanta and my goal is to get to Seattle, what I can look at this heuristic as is this is how much more, how many more miles it will take me f to get to Seattle from Atlanta. It will take me 840 miles to get from Salt Lake City to Seattle, right? We're all okay. We're comfortable with 840 being a mile or a number. Good, good. Some of you didn't look like it. Some of you were sleeping. I didn't say it. Uh, okay, so fine. Well, again, if we're looking at it, we've got this G plus H. We've got this calculation. And this is where we introduce the algorithm known as A star. A star, literally, the star means it's the best. Congrats. If you want to do pathfinding in a two-dimensional world or in a simple graph-like structure, you are using A star. You're not using anything different. You're using... Again, the star is meant to represent that. That's why it was given that name. Uh, but, okay, fine. Let's tackle this problem of working with a star. So how we build it out. This is my way of thinking about it without touching code for a second, right? Mostly because I like to make sure that I understand how these algorithms work because I have to write test cases for them. And it would be great if I understand the math behind them beforehand. So if we're looking at this, again, our task is to get from RDU to Seattle. Okay, fine. I know my starting point. Now, what I like to do, as you're seeing in my slides, right, is I like to build it out in this structure. You are going to be asked to do this structure uh, for your midterm. You're going to have a lecture exercise next week. I encourage you to use this design as well. This is how my brain processes this stuff. I'm trying to make sure that you understand how my brain works because then I'm going to ask you to do what I do. Does that make sense? Good? Bueller? Okay. So the entire idea is I like to also have not just this graph-like structure that I'm drawing out, but I like to also carry a, a build a table at the same time. That just helps my brain sort of keep track of everything. So... I like to just have, as I started out, there's going to be a G, there's going to be an H, there's going to be an F. This, you know, you can have it be to and from, that part's, I don't care about that. What I care more about is like, hey, I'm building out a data structure that I can work off of, right? Oh, RDU, starting point. 
or do you not? Okay, well, how much did it take for me to get here, right? Think what G was, how much time it took to get here. Well, if you notice, G equals zero. Why? That's my starting point. I'm already in Raleigh. I don't need to move anywhere to get out of Raleigh or to get to Raleigh. I'm already in Raleigh. But then, again, as we kind of work through this, we're already, we're already in the algorithm. We're already working, you know, the algorithm's loop has already begun, if, is how I want you to think about it. All right, I'm at this location. I'm at Raleigh. I'm at RDU. How much further is it to my goal? And in this case, it's 2844. 2844. I would add those together. 2844. Right. Easy, easy. We get that part. Okay, well, again, this is the starting point. We see this is a priority queue. Remember how the concept, what the concept of the priority queue is, right? Either the largest or the smallest, depending on how you built it, is bubbling up to the root, and then you extract the root, right? You all remember your priority queues from 316? I'm going to call up Dr. King, and he's going to be like, you're all fine. Right? Oh, okay, cool. Well, what this is going to do is this is going to expand into what are my possible options. Now, this is where, you know, bah, boom. When you start to work through this, when I draw this out, when you have to write these things out on a sheet of paper, you, you don't want to be erasing all the time. I know it, right? Nobody wants to erase. What I like to do is I like to kind of signify these with some sort of indicator. Or, you know, I'll indicate, hey, I'm not using this one anymore. Now, for the first, this, the reason why I'm saying first one or I'm, I'm, I'm not doing what I normally do, since this is the beginning, right, again, this is that concept of that's the first step. That's your starting point. I, I typically ignore them because it's the starting point. I don't do a lot of my work with it. But more to my point as I start to build this out, this is the part I want to really focus in on. I have three potential options. I can go to Atlanta, I can go to Charlotte, or I can go to Washington, D.C. Now, when I start writing out this design, one of the things I like to do because Just, hold on, let me use this. Just look at how many numbers are, ah, oh, God, <laughs> on top of, where's the, there you are. Let's just, let's clean this up so it makes sense, right? Look at how many numbers are just floating about right now, right? And I just added more numbers with this thing called H. So what I like to do as I'm working through this is I like to kind of write out those numbers along my edges. That helps my brain keep track of them because it's gonna, we're doing a lot of adding. And even with a calculator, making sure we're adding the right numbers everywhere kind of matters. Now, specifically, this is, the, this is what we would call the step cost. How much does it cost to go from RDU to Atlanta, right? by itself, nothing else attached to this. And as you can see, I've sort of got these built up uh, already lined up for me. But again, that same kind of approach comes into how I like to work. I like to add in all of my, my numbers. Once I've drawn them, I like to now include them in the table. So here's my RDU. Here's my Gs. This is why I had them written out. I rewrite them again. And then finally, I look at that H. And this is where, yes, you have to do a reference, especially when you're doing these things manually by hand. I have to then go into that straight line heuristic right here and do a lookup on every single one of them. I'm going to cheat because you can see I've already given myself those. Uh, what are they? 263, 2637, 2795. And 2744, which will turn into 3044, 
3,007. All right. I've just written a whole bunch of stuff on the whiteboard. Now what? Right? Again, we're thinking about this from the concept of I do want to have the shortest path, right? A star is trying to find a path and find the shortest path to a possible location. So based on my priority Q, right, I'm going to look at these numbers. This is why I draw it out the way I do. Uh, specifically, I work off of sort of alphabetical order, is now I have a bunch of Fs. Which one is the smallest F? Charlotte, right? I look at Charlotte, I see that's the smallest. I like to indicate when it gets selected and removed from the priority queue. Why? Because again, do you want to be erasing all the time? No. Do you want to be like reordering this? To No, right? It's it, overcomplicating it. So I just kind of, this is how I make my life easier. I indicate, hey, it was the first thing removed from the queue. I ignore again starting, right? Boom. Ha. Oh, well, what that does is that means I'm going to go ahead and expand off of my Charlotte option. You can see I sort of do some reordering here for the sake of uh, doing that. There's that expansion. That same question comes into play. What are the options that I now have from this location? I have a lot of them, right? In this case, obviously, one, two, three, four, six. One, two, three. ATL, Buffalo Wild Wings, uh, Memphis, uh, or Hare, Orlando, that's an R, and then Salt Lake, St. Louis, boom, right? So the one thing I want you to kind of take a look at is notice what happens to my Gs, right? It's no longer just the step cost but it's now, hey, 167 plus how much does it cost for me to get from there? It's 244. So this is why I start to like to add these things in. I know I didn't have them uh, there because I was mean to myself. Uh, let's see, where's Buffalo Wild Wings? Uh, 405. It's not Buffalo Wild, it's Baltimore, but b dubs in my brain. Uh, Memphis, Memphis is 619. ORD is uh, six, uh, 767. Uh, Orlando, 524. 24. And then St. Louis is uh, 715. Right. Reason, again, that I'm doing these things, I know it takes up some more time, but again, that helps my brain process and walk through this and essentially allows me to solve this without needing to you know, bust out uh, uh, any form of a program. So I start to bring these things out, and again, this is where, hey, ATL from Charlotte would kick in. Now, I won't draw all of them because you can see it, but I, I, this is mostly for me to kind of walk through what I'm doing, right? I see the step cost. I see the step cost. Let me... Right? I add them together. Then I ask that same question. Well, what is the H... Uh, for Atlanta, right? Again, Atlanta H, uh, where was it? I ha why do I, it's right there, 2637. And so when I add all of these numbers together, right, uh, where are you? That will turn into 3048. And I, you can see I keep on adding these in, right? It's not just... 
for Atlanta, but I keep going. I go in with Memphis. I go in with Baltimore. I see a lot of people busting their calculators out to test that math. So fine. You don't trust me? 167 plus 244 plus... Ha-pa! Acting like... No, always double check my math because sometimes I don't do good math. Uh, anyways, you can see, again, what I do with this is I establish now that I've got this kind of giant list and I do start to mark them indicating sort of what's going to be the next thing I expand to. You can see I do a few different little like tips and tricks on my end to just like keep my brain processed. So I only circle something after it's been removed from the queue, right? So that's just ways that my brain sort of helps work through things. Reorganizing it, boom. I'm, here I'm just doing the math for y'all. Uh, so I can see that St. Louis from Charlotte becomes my next option. So if I were to just... Uh, St. Louis from CLT, uh, that is 167 plus 175. St. Louis had a, an H of 2,083, which results in a value of uh, 29.65, right? Again, if we're looking at, again, my priority queue, we look at the different values, right? Because I don't want to do any erasing, just having it in order and then looking for what's the smallest non-crossed out uh, F or yeah, F score is what helps my brain kind of process it. I see that, oh, this is the next thing that I would be expanding on. So I give it a nice little indicator. Give it that nice little cross out. So I don't count that the next time I have to do some evaluations. I give it a nice little circle. And wouldn't you know it, I do the process all over again. So in this case, now I'm at Kansas City versus ORD. And I would walk through this same process again. I'd add those in, add them in. Again, as I work through it, you know, since I have those options, and just to keep kind of walking through that, so MCI versus ORD. Right, those have their own numbers associated to them. Um, what is that? 284 and 296. 284 or 248? 248. Right, and so again, as I work through and I've got my calculator, I'm punching these things out. 67 plus 715 plus 248 or... 67 plus 715 plus 296. So I've added them in. I get that listed on the queue. Ta ta. And so again, I have my priority queue lined up. Once I reorganize it again, notice I run into a slight issue. What's the issue? It's high. I got a tie. Look at that. What do I do in the tie? Do I go from uh, Charlotte or do I go from St. Louis? Is it this way? Is it this way? Is it this way? Again, remember, right now I'm just doing this by hand physically on you know, a PowerPoint, so by hand, right? What happens when you're actually coding it? Think about what happens when you do comparisons, right? When you're building out your priority queue, oh, you have to extend comparable on your nodes inside the priority queue, and then you're deciding, hey, does, you know, how do you, how, do you do something overcomplicated with like, oh, F, and then like, hey, let's cheat and, oh, if G was bigger or H is smaller, right? Do you do that or not, right? That's, again, where the, you know, uh, I'll say, you know, you probably don't need to do it for, you know, any of the work in this class, but it's, you know, right? It comes back down to this idea of when you're doing a comparison, what do you do in the case of a tie, right? Because depending on what you do changes walking through the problem. For my sake, I'm just going to go off of, well, we already had the uh, CLT to ORD 
in this entire priority queue. It was inserted in first, and so I'm working off of the, the concept. I know this is where, you know, conceptually it doesn't happen, but I'm, I'm working off of that concept that, oh, you know, it bubbled up sooner type of thing, right? That's my way. It was added in earlier, so it, ha it, it gets higher priority off of that. That's, again, that doesn't work in real coding land, but I'm not in real coding land. I'm in PowerPoint land. Good. Good. So again, I could do both of them. Uh, I can continue to expand on this. The one thing I will kind of stress is this is where you will get points wrong in lecture exercise two. I know I'm dangling carrots on things that I haven't been released yet, but this is my warning to you, right? Because notice, what was our end goal? What, what is our end game? To Seattle. <gasps> I see it. I taste it. Have I gotten there yet? No. A lot of you see, and this is because you're like, hey, I want to, you know, I, I'm sick and tired of doing this homework assignment, right? Uh, so I'm going to just immediately try and skip ahead. I'm going to try and just, like, make some estimations because I got that big brain, right? None of us have big brains. Uh, even this one. I got, I'm a doctor. That doesn't mean anything, right? doesn't mean I'm smart. It just means I'm a doctor, uh, don't assume just because you see it, that's when you go and you, that's your next path. Like, just because you see it, again, what happens if this is a billion, right? Arbitrarily speaking, hey, you know, uh, from uh, O'Hare to Seattle, it takes one billion miles, right? You don't want that. None of you want to take that path. But, oh, it's the first one I saw. No, remember, just because you first when you saw it doesn't mean anything. Uh, because again, look, notice how, yes, if we follow this, we treat that algorithm just like we've been doing the entire time. You do the math, notice what happens to the O'Hare to Seattle calculation. That F isn't the best. It's close, you can taste it, but it's not the best. So how does the algorithm work. The algorithm only pulls root. Remember, think, this is priority Q. I'm drawing it like this. But it looks like this, right? And when you do peak or pop in your priority Q, it doesn't know how to get to here, right? It doesn't know how to do the reorganizing re from this book. Right? That's where you got to really dust off the priority queue slides from Dr. King's class, right? From three, six. You don't need to worry about that part. But again, you understand, like, we only care about roots because that's the only thing that the data structure lets us have access to. So, in that situation, I see St. Louis to MCI or uh, Kansas City. That's what I have to consider next, right? Because it may be a cheaper route, right? There, we don't know. Right, in, uh, 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 Kansas City may have a bullet train to Seattle that costs one. We don't know, right? We have to expand. It doesn't, uh, but hey, you see that uh, from St. Louis to Kansas City, hey, we do get to uh, Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City is actually pretty close, but it's not close enough, right? Uh, and so you can see the, the point I'm trying to get here because I'm, gonna, I'm telling you, right, Lecture exercise two, I did this on purpose. You're going to have an incorrect path that you have to walk through, that I am grading you on. I'm going to ask questions assuming you took the wrong path because that's how the algorithm works. I'm going to see Piazza posts next week of people who didn't take the path. And I'm going to explain, you know, so again, walk through the algorithm. Don't just try and uh, big brain it. Uh, but again, you can see, hey, you know, I took this route. I still had to consider this route. But here's where we get into the next fun step. I have found a pathway from RDU to Seattle. 
Now what? I know. Did you find all the other paths and then compare them with cost? Nope. Nope. I don't need to find any other paths. Uh, I'm actually, I have found the path. I'm good. Say it loud, say it proud. I got a backtrack. I am still here. All I have done through this entire algorithm is plan my moves. I am not in Seattle. I'm still in RDU. I know now the pathway from RDU to Seattle. The next step is, all right, what's my first move? What's my first action? And so I found my goal, right? And so this is where, remember, treat it like it's the graph. It's a structure. It's, an, it's a graph-like structure. So, hey, what was my parent? How did I get to Seattle? Well, I got to Seattle from O'Hare. Okay, well, that's not where I am. So how did I get to O'Hare? Oh, I got to O'Hare from Charlotte. Well, that's not where I am, so how did I get to Charlotte? I got to Charlotte from RDU. Hey, that's where I am. So after all of this, right, what is my first move? Well, I just saw. I'm at, here's my starting location of RDU. In the pathway I just kind of mapped out, the first step, step one, is go to Charlotte. That's it. Then what? Then what do you think happens? You do it again. You walk through the entire process all over again, and here's, or I'll, I'll toss this up. So game concentration students, why would I need to do this entire algorithm again? Things move around. Things move around, right? Oh, it's an enemy trying to track the player character, right? So enemy sees, oh, here's the pathway. And then the player character moved, right? I moved because I was going this, but then the player character, oh, well, I got to recalculate everything. I got to work through the process again, right? It's an almost every step calculation because as I move, whatever my target is could be changing, right? And so now that I've shown and demonstrated. Don't you know what it's time for y'all to do? I'll give you 10 minutes, so or nine minutes, so we'll come back at uh, 3.52. Good luck. You may not finish it, that's fine. Just warning. And we are back, everybody. Let me see how well you, where you got, just in case. I got a few responses. Cool, cool. Um, you know, double check your maths. You know, I've seen a few. The reason why I'm kind of presenting this is, again, a lot of this is making sure you are, you know, keeping an eye on where those calculations are coming in. Uh, so even uh, if I'm looking at the the, the the F score of Dallas to, uh, there we are. Um, and so, again, keeping an eye on these types of things. Don't over-evaluate uh, going on there. The one thing I will stress as, you know, just to kind of probably see, this is where uh, a lot of you, I'm going to go ahead and make one. This is just a terrible, I don't, not you. I mean, in the, like, Google doesn't really have a good answer for this one. Uh, I will say at 4 o'clock, so in a couple minutes, a full walkthrough of this activity will be available for you because you'll notice it gets kind of complicated. Uh, you took that, that, that first pathway and then, you know, you ran into this situation and it's like, oh, all right, now you got to do this whole other pathway. Now, with that being said, I would like to stress, I gave you nine minutes 
right? How long or how much were you able to get done in nine minutes? A lot, not so much, right? Be mindful of that when it comes to a midterm. Yes? Yeah, I when it, when when I when I look at uh, this is mostly again this is a me thing of just like well that's the starting point right so I'm not I don't want to know where the starting point is because I gave you that kind of thing that's that, that's where that so you can see like I didn't point that out if I was to do it I do like this indicator that it's the first it's before I even start making considerations yeah. Uh, but again, the, the full walkthrough, I would strongly encourage you to at least continue working through it. You can double check your math, obviously. Um, but again, you are going to be asked to do this next week, and then you're going to be asked to do it on a midterm, and then a study guide, and then a final exam. Learn. Learn this. You will be asked to do it again. Question. Yes. Through the roof. Then the other the other pathways are still in consideration. Yep. Yeah. So again, the um, when we hit this like O'Hare kind of giant wall, remember every your we we got to treat this like we're uh, an agent thinking of moves rather than an agent moving through the world. So we have not moved. We are still. Our agent is still at Memphis the entire time. Just like, you know, here's my analogy. I want to get to that door. All right, I am now thinking up the moves. I need to go that way or that way. Which one of those would be a better way? Well, that's not. That's going to be further away. So my, my F score would be worse. My F score would be better, right? I'm, I have thought, and now I have the second pathways. I see that this would get me there. Okay, I have thought of my moves, now I enact them is the way I want you to think about it. So this entire process is still me thinking. I have, I have not left Memphis uh, until I have found the path. Does that help explain it a little bit? Cool. So as we kind of look at this, again, uh, when we're looking at it from sort of that that space-time complexity of trying to identify it. Uh, you know, it's admissible as a tree search and consistent as a graph search. Those are big, fancy $5 generic words of trying to explain what that means. Consistent means that if we are using this in a graph, we will always get consistent results, the same approach. We will always see sort of a similar performing model uh, with a star. When we think admissible, right, that's what we're trying to get at is, yeah, it kind of works as a tree, you know, like that's a tree. If you notice, it, it, you know, I could hand that to you and you, you have an understanding of what's going on when we convert uh, from a, a graph into that uh, tree-like structure. So we're okay with accepting it. But you notice that we have sort of a caveat that I, I, I gave you H, right? I gave you this H. I said, oh, we're going to do a straight line, and here's a number, right? Well, how do, you, how do you translate that into a completely different field where it's not something I'm giving you when you want to use this in your real-world applications? Well, the big thing is you have to, you know, when you're trying to produce your own H, it has to not overestimate, right? You don't want anything saying, oh, it'll take me $10 billion, uh, to get there. Uh, you want something realistically ballparked uh, kind of a, a, an amount. There's a big old fancy, like, what does that turn into? Uh, and that's like, hey, you know, your heuristic should be lower than the cost it takes for you to make a step to this point plus the heuristic of your neighbor. Big, if you are a theory person, there you go. I, uh, I can explain it in much more detail, but, like, that's the, there. Um, no, so the more important aspect is how do you implement this, right? That's because, you know, we, we did the math, right? I showed you the math, but this is not a math class. This is a computer science class. And 
you have programming assignments in this class. Wouldn't it be great if I just, you know, told you how to work on these algorithms? Yeah. <laughs> so this is, in my opinion, my favorite uh, uh, site for this. There's, you're going to hop on Wikipedia, and they're going to start talking about open and closed sets. I don't like that algorithm, personally, um, because sets, right? How familiar are you with your, your up trees? Yeah, yeah. You remember up trees? You remember that was a word from 316? Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> I can hear the murmurings, right? Well, so that's all a set is. I prefer this approach. This is a much more straightforward, uh, like it, my brain connects this one much better. Um, and so I, I love the red blob. It's widely used off the internet. Um, so I would strongly encourage it uh, when you have to do for example, and it has other ones, but specifically the one I want to know, that's not what I want to do. When I get to, you know, it has a, a great visualizations, all that stuff, and he, uh, the, the writer of this is uh, taking it from a video game perspective. Uh, however, why I like this is that's, there's your pseudocode. Looks very much like Python, right? It's not Python. But you could take this, and you could look at this and go, OK, well, I could implement this in Java. Welcome to problem set two. <laughs> yeah, look, I mean, again, this is why I love it so much. It, it helps explain every little piece to, uh, for you in a nice little pseudocode manner. Now it is your job to take that pseudocode that is very easy to read and transform it into programming languages. Uh, so yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But I'll, I'll keep on walking through this because you can see I, I have a little bit more walkthrough uh, explaining it. Um, again, hey, the priority queue. You're going to become very familiar with the priority queue in this class, right? If, again, you, you were familiar with 316. No, you're going to be using it in this class. Do you have to build your own priority queue? No. 316, remember the last stuff that you learned in 316? You're allowed to use the standard library data structures. You're allowed to use, right? Don't, you know, just don't try and pull any fastballs on me, and you're good. And I, I don't mean that in like a ha, ha, ha. You know, it's just like, hey, priority queue, java.util. Use it. Uh, but why I kind of stress this is because it's pseudocode. Pseudocode means not real code. Right? That priority queue doesn't exist. It's not an actual, right? Again, this is not Java. Uh, and likewise, it's not called dot put in Java. So you know what you have to do? You got to dust off that old Java doc, and you got to read the manual. I know. I'm a monster. Right? So it's not a dot put. Make sure you are familiar with that. Likewise. What's start? And when I mean start is, yeah, OK, it's Memphis. But how do you represent that in code is how I always present that. Remember, it's a, data, it's a priority queue. It needs some kind of priority queue node to go in there. Are you going to be giving it right, a node, or are you going to be working off of something? Again, it will depend, and I don't want to spend too much time on like those because you have a problem set one that you're focused on. Right. You will deal with the problems at two later. Um, but uh, again, here's my little uh, recommendation, because you'll start to see these. This is my little tip for future you. Uh, again, you're allowed to use what you've learned, uh, or you're allowed to use standard library. You will need to create some nodes um, to be beneficial. Uh, but uh, just to keep on moving, there's also uh, the idea of uh, dictionaries. Java doesn't have dictionaries. That's a Python term. What do we have in Java? Hash maps, key value pairs, congratulations. They're literally the same thing, right? Python calls them dictionaries. We call them maps. Same thing. Same, you know. uh, so again, same concept. You don't need to go build your own maps with collision you know, stuff. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with them, I don't know how much you do in 316 with uh, the map territory. Uh, but but uh, where are you? No, I don't have it. Okay, well, hold on. Discard. No, ah, ah, I went too fast. I went too fast. Ah. 
Okay, right? Uh, you know, if you are unfamiliar with hash maps and how to work them, wouldn't it be great if you knew a popular YouTube sensation who had a video on how to use a map? Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I only have 209 vid- you know, links on this thing. It's only been viewed 20,000 times. Let's get that up to 1,000. I mean, 100,000. Moving on, I only have a little bit of time left. Uh, so again, hash maps, uh, tree map also works. But again, like you're a map of some form. Um, same kind of concept as we go through. This part, I will stress, you know, again, you're going to need to uh, look for... How to, how to represent this in Java land, right, of establishing O uh, came from, right? That's what that was. Came from is, you know, the code equivalent of trying to tell you where you're, you came from. And so, again, if I'm looking at something like my starting point, right, I would need to be establishing A, it came from nothing. Cost so far. That's me tracking G. Right? That's me trying to track G the entire time. Well, it costed me zero to get to the start point. Then we start the while loop, right? Again, while my frontier, also what I mean, you know, frontier meaning what I have to explore, right? What I have to explore while it's still, while I still have things to explore, let's grab the first thing. It, you know, in the priority queue. Let's grab the top thing. Oh, then what? Well, if I'm at my goal, if I've reached Seattle, exit out of the loop, right? Makes perfect sense. I've found my goal. Otherwise, how do I get my neighbors, right? What are my neighbors? And this, is, this will be a question for you, for your homework. Again, problem set two, not right now, but right, how do you get neighbors? That's something I'm tossing up to you, uh, leaving to you. Um, here's how I then count or calculate, right, my new cost, my new G. Hey, how much did it cost me to get to this current place? Plus, right, how much did it take for me to get to Denver? And how much is it going to cost me to go from Denver to O'Hare, right? That's what you see right here. Cost so far, plus that next step, that next neighbor. And then it keeps on going, and I, I, you know, it has a few other little pieces there, but then you also see a heuristic. I will once again toss this to you. You're going to have to decide a heuristic, right? That's some fun for you to kind of work towards on your end. Um, <clears throat> what I'll kind of, since I, I have a little bit of time, I'll field any questions about the pseudocode or any of that stuff. Uh, yes? How does environment observability affect A star? Uh, so environment, when we're, so we're talking specifically about the environment fi- uh, class, or are we talking environment like general? Uh, so this is so when it comes to like the environment and what you can see, what we're we are in the space of completely observable right now. We are going to stay in completely observable for a, a considerable amount of time. Uh, we won't start going into uncertainty and unknowns uh, toward the end of the semester because that that makes things much more complicated because that's where probability has to start showing up. Uh, for right now, we're just everything is still very visible. Other questions? Questions about problem set one? Who's already finished with problem set one? Right? How long did it take? Two or three hours. Not not difficult. Don't overcomplicate it, right? Again, with problem set one, you know, where it's much more about getting familiar with the environment, right? Rather than uh, you know, being exact. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. 
It's still due Labor Day. I, not not difficult. Kind of. I if I, I you know this is the. They make things weird with the days. I know, like it's a holiday. I could either make it a day earlier, which nobody likes, or a day later, at which point again it took two three hours type of thing. Uh, I saw a question from Eyeballs. Okay, you know, uh, I, I I mulled it over. It's this is the weird part of like I have two versions of the class. I got the Tuesday Thursday one. And yes, I'm a monster. I'm sorry. Uh, I have a question about the Aries thing. The what? Uh, the Aries thing. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me like what effect uh, you think is overestimating or underestimating the efficiency of oil? Yeah, so when it comes to uh, this, is something we'll spend uh, actually a lot more time on this. Um, after the break, uh, after Labor Day. Uh, our next lecture is specifically on heuristics. Let's only look at heuristics. Uh, the big thing about them is when it comes to overestimating, the issue is it's uh, you don't want to go over is the be best way to think about it. Because again, this is meant to be a rough estimation of how much further you have to go. So if I say, you know, there's nothing saying, oh, uh, it, it'll be another 20 hours or 20, you know, 20,000 miles, right? That's, if everything is overestimated, then it, then the actual kind of uh, how close or how much further I have left to go gets diminished at the end of it. Oh. But since I already start seeing people, I'll let that be the last question and then we'll, I'll send you on your way. For one. Is there something we're supposed to What? That's the only thing you should be seeing. If you're seeing like a a thing on the side, I really dislike this thing on the side. Don't trust the thing on the side. That is something I, I can't. I can't. No, so what you're seeing on that side, I, I got the time, so what you're seeing is this. You are seeing your due date, and then you're seeing when I'm going to cut you off date. Bring it up to me like after class. That, that, there should only be one thing. Anyways, with that, I'll finish off. See you all next week. Have a good break.